Hey, welcome everyone to a review of the Bose QuietComfort 45 headphones. Now, if you wanna see the written version of this review, you can find a link to my website in the video description. Now, these are active noise canceling headphones, ANC for short, but there's a bit of a caveat, which is with the first thing on our list, the price. Here in Canada, it's priced at $449, and the US is priced at $329. And that's the first thing that kind of works against these headphones, is that they're great. I'll explain in detail that throughout the review, but they're not worth the original price. There are some shortcomings. Here in Canada, you can get them on sale for $90 cheaper, then they're definitely worth it. But with that said, let's dive into the rest of the review and explain further why. Now to connect to these headphones, you can use one of two options. One is Bluetooth wireless connectivity or a wired connection. And that's because there's a headphone jack which is located near the bottom of the left ear cup. If the battery dies, you can still use the headphones over wired auxiliary connection, which is pretty sweet. When using Bluetooth, you can have two active connections at the same time. Now when it comes to phone calls, like in the same example, I have it paired to my smartphone and computer, and I'm playing media on my computer. When I receive a phone call on my cell phone, the content on my computer will automatically pause, thankfully, and I can just quickly answer the call right away without fiddling with anything, which is great. Now when it comes to how many devices it can keep in memory, that's about five devices in my testing, so that basically means I can keep five devices in memory without having to repair them all over again. Now, Bose documentation says you can pair up to several devices. I have no idea what that means, but I got five in my testing, which is probably more than enough for most people. So for wireless connection, it uses Bluetooth 5.1, and Bose advertises a range of about 30 feet. I was able to get further than that because I had my computer connected in my dining room in the kind of like center of my house, and I was able to vacuum the second floor while wearing them, and I was able to get to the furnace core there in my house, which is just a little over 30 feet, and that's through a second floor. Like there's like literally a, a full floor in between, so the range is way better than what Bose advertises. Included in the box with the QC45 headphones is a hard traveling case to protect this expensive equipment, a 2.5 to 3.5 millimeter auxiliary wire, and that's because the port on the headphones is 2.5 millimeter, and the auxiliary cable is measuring at just a little over three and a half feet. There's also a USB-A to USB-C cable, which is uh, about 12 inches in length. However, no charging adapters included in the box as Bose probably expects you to just plug it in directly to a computer to charge it or use your cell phone's power adapter to plug it into a wall outlet. There are some additional accessories sold separately such as an airplane auxiliary adapter because one is not included with the headphones. There are replacement ear cushions as well as replacement items that originally come out of the box in case you lose anything like that headphone jack, auxiliary cable, uh, or your charging cable. Most of the body is constructed of plastic. The most notable exceptions, of course, are the ear cushions and the headband, which contains glass-filled nylon to protect the shape of the headband if the headphones were to, say, be dropped by accident. Don't expect the headphones to be water or sweat resistant because Bose doesn't advertise any IP resistance, so just be cautious if you plan to get them wet. They might not work properly. The headphones are okay to look at. They're not the best looking, but they don't look awful either. And that's due to much of the exterior looking sleek, but there are a ton of visible outlines of where the body is sealed and connected, easily visible microphones. Here, the logos on each ear cup are rather large. Um, I think Bose did that on purpose so people can show off it, like it's kind of like a status symbol, like, hey, look at me, I'm wearing Bose headphones. I'm of the premium standard. Nothing wrong with that, but uh, yeah, they're not very subtle with it, are they? The body doesn't feel very tough for this price, but isn't concerning either. I placed it in my laptop bag with a bunch of other equipment and the headphones were just fine. This is also without the hard case. The ear cups can fold in to save a tiny bit more space in a bag, but this also attributes to why the body doesn't feel very tough despite the hefty price tag. Now they do weigh a hefty 240 grams, which feels a little heavy in the hand, but honestly when you put it on your head, they're not that noticeable. The QC45 comes in four color options, which is black, the one that I'm reviewing for this video, midnight blue, eclipse gray, and white smoke. Now these are extremely comfortable headphones. Like they feel fantastic. I can wear them for four to five hours straight nonstop. My ears never get irritated, they never get hot or sweaty, my head doesn't get annoyed. Something kind of weird though is when I was doing my range testing, like I talked about earlier and I was kind of vacuuming the house, is that, you know, sometimes you gotta move some stuff around and when I was leaning over, I noticed that they kind of slide forward just ever so slightly, maybe about a centimeter. Now, that's kind of annoying. And you might be thinking, well, centimeters, that's really exaggerated, isn't it? No, it's not. Millimeters are probably not a big deal, but I find that even a centimeter or two makes it a discomfort. It feels weird and I have to kind of fix them. It's bizarre because these are over-the-ear headphones with huge cushioning and the headband is rather tight. Not annoying because again they're very comfortable but it shouldn't happen at all with such an expensive headphones. And this one is more of a moot point, more of an FYI. It doesn't work against the final score of the headphones. 
is that placing them around my neck, they're not comfortable. Uh, the headphones, the ear cups rather, are just too large. Turning my head left and right, it, it keeps hitting my chin. Looking down is almost impossible. You would think that turning the ear cups in would help that. Yeah, I can turn left and right, but now it's kind of choking me. My workaround personally, and I've seen other people do this, is just put them on your head like this. It looks a little odd, but this is something I personally have done many times before, and no one seems to care. It, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Of course, one workaround to not wring them around your neck and just leave them on your ears is just pause your content and turn on aware mode, which I'll cover later on. The interior of the headband has a decent amount of cushioning and adds to the level of comfort. The ear cup cushions are made of synthetic leather and provide excellent comfort. The padding is soft and thick, which makes them a joy to wear. The flexibility and rotation of the ear cups are some of the best I've ever seen on headphones. Rotating them up, down, forward, and back achieves some large angles. In addition, the headband stretches to some decent lengths. The headband has a notch design when adjusting the length. As I did mention earlier, the ear cups can be changed. You can buy replaceable units on the Bose website. When it comes to controls, the primary set of controls are on the right ear cup. On the outside, there's a switch for power off and on, and holding it will enable Bluetooth pairing mode. On the bottom is controls for volume up, and the middle button, which is referred to as a multi-function button, which is for, well, multi purposes. Well, that's exactly what it is, it's for multi-purposes. And using the multi-function button, a single tap will play pause content or answer or hang up a phone call. Double pressing will go to the next track. Triple pressing will go to the previous track and some additional commands for phone calls. Uh, the bottom button is to lower volume. Now there are a couple of annoyances when it comes to the buttons. The first is that they're all too close together. Very often I'm trying to press the multi-function button to play or pause something or double tapping it to go to the next track. I end up lowering the volume twice because I'm double tapping the volume down button by accident because they're right on like on next to each other. There's no gap. The next problem is the multifunction button is used for almost everything. Why couldn't you press and hold the volume up button to go to the next track and volume down button to go to the previous track? It might sound like I'm nitpicking, but you have to understand that when it comes to phone calls, there are seven commands for phone call controls alone for the multifunction button. It's insane. But wait, there's more. Holding it for one second turns on your phone's voice assistant and listens for commands using the headphone's microphones, which works decent even in noisy environments and is quick at providing responses. Bose doesn't list which assistants will work, but I can confirm it works with Google Assistant and Siri, and I've done my testing with Google Assistant. On the left ear cup at the back, the only button there is the action button, which allows you to turn on ANC mode or aware mode, which again, as I mentioned, I'll cover very shortly. Unfortunately, automatic detection of play pause is not present. So for example, a lot of competing headphones, even much cheaper ones, will have it so that when your headphones are on, your content's playing just fine. When you take it off, it'll automatically pause your content for you. You don't have to fiddle with the controls on your cell phone or your computer. When you put the headphones back on, it will automatically resume and play your content. Unfortunately, on such an expensive set of headphones, that's not available. It doesn't do that. Now, noise cancelling, which is what a lot of people are interested, is incredible. Quiet mode, which is ANC mode, cannot be adjusted. You can't like lower the amount of noise cancellation like you could with, say, the XM5s or the Bose 700. Unfortunately, it's just you turn on quiet mode and it's full ANC mode to the max. However, in terms of performance, it works superb whether it's like the humming of a plane or a bus, you won't hear the engine that much. It's like almost non-existent to be honest. Um, you know, the background noise from a TV in a different room doesn't exist. It's just crazy good in terms of ANC performance. The exceptions here of course are like say a loud siren from an emergency vehicle driving past you on the street. Um, your kids yelling at you because they hate you, which is kind of like my life. They just yelling in your ear. Those will come through ever so slightly, but of course that's because ANC technology was kind of expected. Now when it comes to ANC performance compared to the Sony XM5s, which I have reviewed, I'll link to that reviews in the video description, which is my daily driver. Uh, the Sony XM5s are just a tiny bit better. When it comes to low pitch noises, no problem, they're both pretty equal. When it comes to high pitch noises, the XM5s are just a tiny bit better. Not by a lot, but it's something I have noticed. Now aware mode uh, is basically when you turn off ANC mode, it's just you have the headphones on, and the microphones will turn on and take all the noise around you and input it into your headphones. So you can actually hear your surroundings as if you're not wearing the headphones. I have to say, man, it performs incredible. It's just a wonder to me how good the sound is coming in. So, you know, testing with my wife sitting next to me and she's talking to me and I have a wear mode on, I could not tell I was wearing headphones. The, the audio was just super crystal clear. Uh, when it comes to range of hearing your surroundings, I notice about 10 feet and under is pretty good. Anything beyond 10 feet, it doesn't pick it up as heavily, but again, you're relying on microphones, but the sound quality is incredible. 
Unfortunately, there is no regular mode, which basically means to turn off uh, active noise canceling and to turn off aware mode to conserve battery. It doesn't have that feature. Now, technically, there is a way to get around this to have plain old headphone mode, so there's no additional technology enabled, but that means relying on the headphone jack. Bose documentation states that the battery will last about 22 hours in a regular usage. In my testing of multiple battery drains and multiple recharging, I was able to average about 23 and a half hours, which is really close to Bose's claims, so we kind of give it a notch there. Other manufacturers, competing headphones, and even cheaper headphones will perform almost at 30 hours minimum. At this price point, the battery performance is not that great. To make things worse, the recharge time is pretty long. It takes two hours to fully recharge the headphones, which is in line with Bose's documentation. Competing headphones usually fully charge in about 90 minutes. To charge the headphones themselves, the USB charging port is located on the bottom of the right ear cup. And there's still one more bummer. You can't use the headphones while they're charging. Even if they're on and you plug them in, they'll automatically turn off while charging. Okay, so what you're hearing right now is all audio quality through the QC45 headphones. They're not the best I've ever heard on headphones. So right now I'm in a quiet environment. Well, it's my office is pretty quiet, so I'll give you a sample of what it's like. I'm gonna switch over to my camera microphone, mimicking what it's like in a noisy restaurant environment. In fact, I'm gonna make it excessively noisy on purpose, and then compare that against the QC45 headphones. Okay, so now we're on the camera microphone. As you can tell, the quality is pretty terrible. It's picking up a lot of the surrounding noise. Now switching over to the QC45 headphones. It, it'll suppress a lot of the noise. It's not the best I've ever heard on headphones, but it does a pretty darn good job. So let me stop talking for a second. And as you can tell, it sounds like light muffling. Now let's switch over to me mimicking a windy environment with the fan next to me here, about uh, three feet away. Okay, so I have the fan at the lowest setting. Uh, it's just about three, four feet away from the camera. You can't really see it. So I'm turning in all directions to see can I really get a lot of wind noise pickup. Um, I want to give you an example. It's like in a real life scenario if it were to happen to you. Now when it comes to audio quality, this is where things are pretty interesting and cool. So out of the box, the sound profile, I mean, it's a little flat. That's kind of what you expect because I haven't adjusted the equalizer or anything. Now when I do kind of adjust things, let's say, let's focus on the highs, for example, it's incredible. Some of the best I've ever heard. Some of my rock songs that I listen to as part of my benchmarking tests, when I increase the highs on the equalizer app, which I'll demonstrate later, it got too sharp for me. That's not a bad thing. It's just, that's how the songs are recorded, my benchmarking songs. Um, it just goes to show how damn good the highs can get on the QC45s. When it comes to mids, they're okay, nothing special. I mean, I didn't have to ever adjust it on the equalizer. I found that they're pretty adequate for mids. Bass, lows performance is pretty good, and I'm a bass enthusiast. I found that when it comes to increasing the bass levels, the great thing is that you would get some deep bass uh, output, but you never lost the quality, nothing was distorted. It was always a smooth sounding, uh, well, sound. <laughs> of course, when it comes to comparing the lows to the Sony XM5s, the XM5s are still way better. So when it comes to highs, I find that they're better than the Sony XM5s. Incredible. Again, overall audio performance is actually incredible. Now, when it comes to listening to action movies or video games with explosions and gunshots, uh, especially with the bass setup a little bit high, sounds superb. Now, the sound stage, which is kind of hard to judge from music because it's based on how the song is recorded, I found that sound stage performance was pretty good. Not the best, but not bad at all. When playing like a multiplayer shooting game, first person shooter, I found that bullets from explosions really surrounding me from far away angles or close angles sounded pretty darn good. Now these headphones do support SBC and AAC codec, but not higher codecs such as AptX, unfortunately. However, I wouldn't have you get discouraged as the sound quality is still top notch. All right, so switching over to the software side of things, and if you open it up, you have very minimal controls. There's not a lot going on here. You have modes, which is basically quiet mode or wear mode, which you can control directly from the headphones themselves. You have the equalizer, which is not like a full traditional equalizer, but I mean, it still gets the job done. So for example, if you have it connected to your computer and smartphone at the same time, whatever you're adjusting the equalizer here will carry over to media being played on from your computer. Source is which device you want to connect to. As I mentioned, I have five devices set in memory and so far works well. The settings is not much else going on here. Like for example, modes is which setting do you want it to remember to be powered up with, what you used last. And of course you can hear your own voice during phone calls to see if you're too loud or not. And other things like the voice prompts because there are voice prompts within the headphones themselves. And so you're probably looking at the score and thinking <coughs> that, uh, <coughs> sorry, they're choking me, that the score is a little unfair and uh, that you know it deserves a higher score. The, the problem here is that the price is too high for the lack of features as I mentioned throughout the video. Competing headphones at a similar price tag or maybe in like $40 more, like say for the Sony XM5s, 
you can get way more bang for your buck. Now, when they're on sale in, here in Canada for $90 cheaper, they are a must buy. If you're looking to save money and at that price point, they definitely deliver quality. And that's pretty much a wrap for this review. So if you found this video useful, be sure to check out my website and social media links in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.